You may remember Mitch. Uh, he's appeared with me before on one of the live streams. Mitch and I go back a long, long way. He was uh, a live-in student back in the 90s, right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, he was a live-in Uchideshi back in the 90s with uh, Gary and Wally and the boys. And uh, he's one of our Kyogishin black belts, fought off in the final of the Queenslands. And now he's one of Australia's top uh, athletic development conditioning coaches. So actually, I'm really excited because Mitch is going to come on board with the uh, Budo Blueprint app. And I'm going to be drawing on Mitch's knowledge for uh, a lot of the conditioning uh, areas that I'm working on. Uh, look, today I just want to address strangles and chokes. So I've got, I got Mitch to wear a gi, but also a T-shirt because I want to show you how you can actually use T-shirts as well. A gi is just representative. It works well with a leather jacket, a denim jacket. I have another jacket there which we'll put on later just to show you. You don't need a gi. Uh, there are... A, Strangles and, and chokes on the ground, uh, strangles and chokes standing up. Uh, everyone calls them RNC, rear naked choke. It's actually not a choke. It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a strangle. The difference between a strangle and a choke is simply that a strangle uh, limits the blood flow to the brain, whereas a choke limits the oxygen availability by uh, squashing the, the, the throat. Uh, very different, two very different things. This can take a long time to uh, have the effect other than the pain. And if someone is fairly resilient to pain, that won't stop them for a minute or, or more even. Whereas the blood flow, you chop it off and it's there out in a few seconds. Uh, you also have variations. Uh, some of the variations are simply something like, I may come in for a rear naked, I mean a, a guillotine, but instead of coming in under the neck, I'll come across and do a neck crank with a cross face. We'll look at grab, uh, um, chokes on the ground, strangle and choke variations too that are more than anything nerve plexus attacks. So there are certain uh, chokes with, if you, if you do them as a choke, they, I mean, as a strangle, they will cut off the blood, but also can be extremely effective uh, attacking the um, the. Uh, carotid sinus on the side of the neck. Let's look at some of the principles here. So it's not necessarily that you stop the blood flow. The reality is, from what I understand, it's more by restricting the blood flow, you affect the blood pressure. And that's why people faint and go unconscious because the body's pr protective mechanism says, I've got a blood pressure problem here. I need to get the head down. And the best way to do that is send them unconscious. Okay, so let's look at different ways you can cut off using the collar. The first way is, we're gonna get a little closer here because we'll do it later on the ground and standing up as well. The first way here is we wanna use the lapel. So I'm going to, and, and one of the fundamental principles is the smaller you can make the hole for the neck, the more restrictive the blood flow becomes. So quite literally, you want to get that area, if you can imagine this is like a rope or like a, a thick cord, and I want to use that to make the area that the neck is in as small as possible. So if my chokes are too far down, it simply won't work because, as you can see, there's no restriction. So as a general rule, and remember all rules are made to be broken, but as a general rule, you try to touch your hands behind. So if Mitch turns around, if you have a look here, I put this hand in and I can even put my thumb right next to my finger. See that? Put this hand in, put this hand, this thumb next to my finger. They're exactly next to each other. And then all I do is I pull and loop. And now what I've got is my fingers still next to each other and I can create the choke by limiting the size. So if when you practice strangles, you find that it's just not working, generally speaking, it's because your grips have slipped. So this is where having a good strong Kyokushin fist is important because if you have a look at my hand, I take the grip here, my hand is bent. See that wrist? I take the grip and bend my wrist. 
I take the grip and bend my wrist. And even if my fingers are touching, my wrist is bent. It's really almost, but it's not there because of my hands. But look what happens now when I go from bent to straight. So I immediately straighten my wrist. So this is one of the key principles you need to remember. Straight wrists for chokes, not bent. You can see, see the, the gap between my wrists? When I straighten, the gap disappears. That's what you want. So I come in and I make a good, tight, chokushin karate fist. And then this one can come under. Good, tight fist. And before I've even started to apply it, Mitch is getting ready for the tap. And I just squeeze that on with the straight wrists makes all the difference. Okay. So the first one I look, want to look at, you can relax your legs if you want to. First one I want to look at is exactly that. So I'm going to take the hand as deep as I can. And that's very practical with a, uh, a jacket, denim jacket, leather jacket, any sort of jacket, especially in a, in a situation where some idiot on the street is going crazy. If I can get my hand in there and stiff arm, it's very hard for them to be able to do anything. At any time I want, I can collapse and hit. But if he tries to hit me, I can always stiff arm with my knuckles on his collarbone okay so that hand position is always really solid okay then the next thing i'm going to do the first one i want you to look at us oh i didn't realize that all the best to uh nick pettis that's uh that's very serious i didn't realize i'll get in touch with him okay watch what i do here the first technique which i just did before deep first deep second wrist straight already the pressure increases okay it's crazy isn't it now just turn a little bit around that way the reason i say that is if i go straight i get x degree of pressure if i change angles i get x to the power of three or four or five okay so i come here now what i'm going to do is if i can't get my hand in the collar I'm simply going to grab the back of the jacket like that. And the third principle I want you to think about with chokes, strangles, any of these is the push-pull principle. It's one thing to pull, it's one thing to push, but it's a completely different thing altogether to push and pull. So this hand now becomes like hikite. This hand pulls in like a hikite. This one, if I can get my thumb in, great. If I can't get my thumb in, I simply hold the gi. This one pushes. It's like uh, Sensei Nick Hughes, How to Be Your Own Bodyguard. Uh, he does some fantastic videos. You should always check him out. But he did one recently showing how you can use the upper block motion as a, as a, a choke. And this is exactly it. I'm coming in here. I can lift up there and come under, or I can come over here, and I change angles here. Now I pull, push, and there's the choke, just like that. I come in here, and you can also affect the cross face by putting your forearm across the jawline. Forearm across the jawline, and it's crazy pressure. I want to come underneath now, come up there like that to get the choke. Another thing you can always think about too is thumb in. See the thumb in there? And then by going thumb in, I lift up. See that? I use my forearm to lift up. When I lift up, now I go fingers in. So thumb in one side, fingers in the other. That's always a good principle to remember. Thumb in one side, lift up, fingers in the other. See that? Then that becomes a cross between a strangle and a choke because you're trying to drive your forearm across his neck. Now, some guys go, well, I'll just drop my jaw and that'll take that um, choke away. You just do it anyway and they'll, they'll tap out of pain 
I have, if they don't tap, they're kind of dumb. And there's been a couple of times in my life where I've been kind of dumb. And the guys doing this to me were relentless. One was Dan Henderson and the other one was Randy Couture. And at the end of the session, I took my mouth guard out and a couple of teeth came out with it. So it's a good idea to tap. Um, tap is a safety mechanism. Another really good choke, and Brad Hansen's here. He'll remember we were back in about 93 or 94. We were training together, and this is the first choke we learned. Push down. Thumb in the nape of the neck right on the label of the gi. And once again, nice, strong fist. And that can be very innocuous. You can be here like this, and you, you kind of, you're moving around, but you have that grip right on the label. Then when you're ready, push, loop. Come in. Once again, there's the choke goes on straight away. If you can't get your hand in because you're pulling it too tight, once again, you can grab the collar. So I thumb in, strong grip, loop the head, grab the collar, change angles, push, pull like that, okay? From behind now, I'll just demonstrate a few of these whilst we're here. From behind, there's a couple of ways you can control someone from behind. The most important thing is to control the hips on the ground. That's why a lot of chokes won't necessarily work if you don't control the hips because they can change angles. So right now I have no control of Mitch's hips. So if I was to start a choke, no, leave the hands out and just turn with my hand. It just turns, keep turning with my hand. It just turns out simply because I had no control of his hip. Okay. But if we work on, I'm just going to do this as a demonstration. Now I take the choke, I set the choke up, but to prevent him from turning in the direction of the choke, I put my foot on his hip. So now when he tries to turn, it's hard to do. I come in under here and I pull the other lapel down. Okay, so we'll turn to face you. So keep that, keep that in mind with the... With the uh, legs too. I won't go too much into that now, but just about that angle, Mitch, yeah, because I want you to see both hands. So two types of controls from behind. A good one is double unders. I tend to think that's the best, the strongest control if your objective is to control them, but it has a problem in that it has no immediate choke or attack available other than a bite. And and if I try to bite Mitch on the... He, he, it's, it's going to be very difficult. So this double under is really strong to control someone, but it doesn't lead into a direct attack. So what I do is I come over in what they call a seatbelt because it looks like a seatbelt. From that position, I can stay tight. If I'm back here, he headbutts me, I'll lose my teeth. So I stay tight. This hand, the underhook hand, opens the gi, and my thumb goes all the way back to the label. Then what do I do? I fold. I can fold the lapel over and make a strong Kokushin fist, right, like that. Then this hand simply comes down anywhere. It doesn't have to be high. comes down anywhere here and might once again makes a fist. So this one now pulls straight down. This one pulls across. So they're going at 90 degrees. Go nice and deep, nice and deep. Now, watch what happens when I stay square to his back. I finally get it. Watch what happens when I change angles. The result is more realistic anyway. If you're, try if you're struggling like this to get a choke, they'll get out. It's that simple. So what you have to do is remember with chokes, Angle is everything. Okay, I come to here, and now the choke is much more immediate. Whilst we're in this position, we have variations of what they call the uh, Hadaka Jime. 
Hadaka Jime, which is rear naked strangle, okay, where the arm comes around under here. Now, there are a couple of ways, you know, police aren't allowed to really do this stuff anymore, so they'll often do this. They'll take the fist and squeeze it in. And that could be effective, but it's only effective to a point because if he's able to resist it to a degree, he just rips my arm down explosively, boom, 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 and he's out, okay? And now he's just really angry. So that's okay if you've got multiple people trying to control a single person. Okay, more to the point, another couple of things you have to be careful of is I don't want to expose my hand at all when I come around someone's back. If I come around here, if he can see my hand, he's going to do things. He'll bite your thumb off. It's that simple. He'll get the hand. I'm coming around. He'll grab it straight away, and he'll start to twist. Okay, that's the first hand. If I bring the second hand around as well, as soon as he, yes, as soon as he can see your hand in front of the line of his chest, he's grabbing it. And then what he'll do is he'll rotate it towards the thumb as he pulls down on the shoulder. Keeps rotating. And it's a great way to get your arm broken. So whenever you're doing rear nakeds, everything is tight, 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 tight. You see, what I didn't do was this and this. I came from here, there. Now, from the front, if you look at the front, this was taught to... No, you, you stay just here. stay there, yeah. Come to the center. This was taught to us by Maddie Tesla. One... It's like you slap the metal on your chest. It's like you're doing this. Slap the metal. You drill that. And then... You get that mindset. So when you're doing it, when I, when I do the naked, you can't take your time and think that you're going to be able to get it. It's one, two. And the hand, one, two. And you slide. Or one, 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 two. One, two, one. And you don't let the arm hang around here for him to grab. I keep it tight, keep it tight, and bring it across. Now, when I say looking from the front, you should be able to see my fingers on both sides. Okay? So I take my fingers tight. Then, as I drop my elbows down and together, I rotate towards the choking arm. This is the front choke arm, I'm going to rotate in the direction of that arm. And it goes on really tight. So if I stay square, watch this. Squeezing, 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 squeezing. And I finally get it. I'm going to squeeze at the same rate, but rotate at the same time. Squeezing, squeezing. The, the difference is cheese and chalk. It's crazy. So never try to do a get in this position and stay here. What you do is, like, I'm, I'm squeezing to a point here, right, Mitch? Of course. I'm squeezing to a point. I'm not going to squeeze anymore. I'm simply going to rotate. And the, 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 re, the difference is absolutely crazy. A couple of important points. It's very common to do the rear naked with the hand on the bicep and the hand behind the head. This is the way it used to be taught. The problem with that is the hand conforms to the shape of the head. Lucky for Mitch, he cut his hair today so he can see the shape of his head. And he simply, to defend that, he reaches over, grabs my hand with both arms, and now you're in trouble. Whatever he does from there is up to him, but you're definitely not in a good shape. So if you want to do that one, you make sure that the hand goes backwards, not like this, but like this, because... Then the wrist, you see, the wrist conforms to the, the neck. So now when he tries to pull the hand over the head, he actually pulls it on tighter. He pulls the choke on tighter, you notice that? So that's really, really important. This style of doing the rear naked was how I was first taught, and it's only practical against a compliant partner. It won't work against a strong, non-compliant opponent whose objective is to hurt you, and in this situation, whose objective is to survive. Okay? So you don't have your hand palm towards him. You have your hand palm towards you. Having said that, metal on chest, slap your hand, slide all the way across, 
so that your fingers now are visible on both sides. That is, and then squeeze in and down and rotate. And that's how you get the immediate effect of that choke. Uh, that particular choke works uh, with or without uh, a gi. Also, check this out, a single hand choke, which I've, I've had a lot of effect, effectiveness with over the time. A single hand choke, what I do is I hug the shoulder with a claw grip and I pull my hand back like that. Okay, now to make it work even better, I want to make sure that I push. So I'll have my elbow. I, I have what I call a tray of drinks style as well. So the hand comes here. Remember, for him to rotate, if I don't have control of his hips, the shoulders turn. To prevent the shoulders from turning, I, I plug it here. So turn your shoulders. Keep turning your shoulders. He can keep turning. Now I'm going to plug it here and plug it here. So now I'm plugging it forward and back. So now when he tries to turn it, there is no turn. Okay, so you think of that principle when you choke. When I come around here, the first thing I do is I use my arm to, to plug like that. Okay, then this one comes here and I pull it back. So now when he tries to turn into the choke. He can't turn that way. And if he turns the other way, I'm pulling down on top of it. So that's a really good choke as well. It's more a choke than a strangle. But you're putting the pressure on, on the uh, throat. Sometimes they drop their jaw to defend that. They drop their jaw to defend it. You simply take your thumb along the jaw where the teeth enter the gum. Super, super uh, sensitive there like that come all the way in and then once again i pull back the elbows and it's it's a pain compliance thing which works very well keep in mind some people will not comply to pain they could be on drugs or they just could have a very high pain threshold to so never depend on it okay so they're good chokes all in a possible stand-up situation turning around once again i'll stand up for a couple now so you can see a little better Let's see if we can get that position. Okay, so another one which translates very well out of a kata. We have this here, osayuke nukite. Osayuke nukite. I'm in this position. He throws the punch at me. Knock it down. Osayuke nukite. See, I put my thumb, my nukite now goes in the back of his jacket. Now from there, I loop, come over, and look. I do the upper block motion here. I grab here, and then I go crossways. Remember, if I stay straight, I'm going 10, 20, 40, 60, 80. Okay? I come to the side, I go 10, 20, 30, 40, and the pressure is very different. Okay? Grips are very important. Make sure you get that grip. So the first thing to remember is I knock good collar tie. Pull his head down. Remember, if he rips his head up against a collar tie, he's open for the double leg. But if he lets his head goes down, lets his head go down, nukate, loop, come up with your, your arm under his jaw, and you can affect the choke there. Another thing you can do is snap down, guillotine. When you do a guillotine, you want to hit it pretty hard. You don't want to just be here and wrap the arm around. What I'm going to do is, as I snap the head down, you can use this hand, snap the head down, I literally go, boom, and I want to get like a little rabbit punch sort of effect on the back of the head. So the guillotine now, down, up, and I lift my hand like this. So I have my radius bone right across his throat. Okay, down, hit, pull it straight up. Okay, now the defense for that is fairly simple. The defense for that is he simply drives his shoulder into my chest. So I come here, I get it on, and at that point he drives his shoulder in. I now have no guillotine, no effective guillotine anyway. So 
some very, very innovative guys, particularly Marcelo Garcia in New York, what he does now to prevent that, as he comes in here, he does what he calls the high elbow guillotine. Let's go here so you can see. Down, up. He takes the grip and he brings the elbow over. So now when Mitch tries to push his shoulder through, he has no opportunity. Oh, sorry, it's good. <laughs> it works. Um, it has no opportunity to shut it off. Okay? You also have cross-face, Jean LaBelle style, cross-face neck cranks from here. Sometimes you go for the neck, they drop their jaw. You just say thank you very much and you continue with a neck crank. It's very super, super effective, right? Yeah, cranks your neck. Yeah, it does. The, the other one, which is also a Jean LaBelle technique, when I say Jean LaBelle, he's the one who taught me, but I'm sure lots of people do it. Anyone who's ever thought about chokes will come up with very innovative ways to do chokes. But what Jean LaBelle do is put his hand on the shoulder. So this one will come around now, and he'll loop the arm over the shoulder like that. We come down, loop, come over the shoulder. Notice my wrists are bent. All I do without even changing anything else is straighten my wrists. And the pressure increase is exponential. It's just sick. It's crazy. Yeah, that, that is one of the most uh, effective control mechanisms. From there, drop down, a couple of knees, a couple of knees, bent wrist to start with, otherwise it's too high. Bent wrist to start with, hand on top of the bent wrist. You can either keep it knife hand or go flat, and then you simply straighten both wrists. It's horrible, isn't it? Oh, yeah, terrible. terrible stuff. Okay, now let's have a look on the ground. Let me have a look at the questions. I haven't even paused to see if anyone's got any comments. Oh. Gaz, Michelle, good on you. We started the legend. Yeah, indeed. Larry Pepper, shout out to you. He's uh, one of the most influential uh, people in my martial arts career. RNC, there you go. Ed Burley, good to see you. Okay, so we'll, we'll continue on now. Let's look at the ground. That should be enough. So there's different ways to look at the ground, all right? When you go to the ground, as, as uh, Lloyd Irvin, who's a great BJJ coach, he points out that, uh, when you hit the ground, he's the one that taught me this anyway. When you hit the ground, you're either top, bottom, parallel, perpendicular, one of the eight positions. Your, job, your objective is to get your grip, stabilize your position, and look for the sub. If no sub presents itself, you further improve your grips, further stabilize your position, and continue to look for the sub. Okay? So in other words, whatever you do on the ground, wherever you end up, you are in one of the fundamental positions, and your objective, therefore, is to... Get your grip, stabilize your position. It doesn't matter if you have a control position that you go for the, the tap. If your stability is wrong, you'll wake up a few minutes later going, what happened? I thought I had him, but you hadn't consolidated your grips and your stability. So stability rules. Masayama said that the one that loses his balance first is the one that loses his fight. Now you think about that. If he says that, that is completely irrelevant to a tournament. And when I first heard it, I thought that doesn't make sense because if I fall over, the referee will step in and stop it. Until I fell over one day in a situation where I was working with Mike Whitten. Happy birthday, Mike. It's Mike Whitten's birthday today. Um, Mike Whitten was one of my very first black belts who's now the Chief Lord Justice for the island nation of Tonga. Happy birthday to you, Mike. We're always thinking of you. But uh, I was in a situation on the street. I've mentioned this before. Couldn't find my work shoes. Ended up with a pair of slippery leather shoes. And bang, on my backside. No referee. The only thing that saved my ass was Mike Whitten. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you can't always take Mike Whitten with you to a tournament. <laughs> okay. So let's look at this now. On the ground, I could be with my legs around him. Okay. Legs around. Let's move back a little bit so there's a little more room. Eh? Good. So on the ground, he has a gi on, so that makes it easier. It's like a jacket. You can end up on the ground. If you ever get pushed over on the street, you want to end up with your legs here and your arm there. 
because that way, if he starts to swing punches at me, I can use my legs and arm. And what I'm going to do is come back here, push, get out, bang, hit, and run. Okay, so you have to remember, don't hang around on the ground. It's a fool's game uh, in the street with cement. All he has to do is I might have control of him here, and all he does is bounce my head on the footpath, and all of a sudden my controls aren't going too well because of all the stars and constellations that I'm seeing, okay? But in a safe environment where you work with a training partner, just move back a little bit, you can be in this position. This is called the garden BJJ, as you know. And there's the old John Donahue, my coach, who's a student of Carlos Machado and Higa Machado. He says, he trained with a guy named Chris Hoyter, they're good mates. And he says, the ABCs, the ABC of guard work, ABC, always be choking. So in this situation, if I'm working with him on the ground, I want to constantly be looking to threatening him with a choke. If I'm not, he's doing things to me. He's passing the air, he's going to. Yeah, all this sort of stuff, and he's gone. I've lost my advantage. So what I do is when I'm in the guard, I control him with my knees, and I'm constantly using my hands to constantly threaten the choke. And even if I can't get the choke immediately, it removes his mindset from attacking and sends him into defensive mode. See that? One choke that I've used here so many times. It's so successful. I've done this to... Oh, Hundreds of people. I'll use my knees to drag them in and I'll capture the head. Now, anyone who grapples will tell you it's not a safe place to be with your head down, so they'll try and get their posture up. They pull their posture up. Okay, so I pull his head down, but my thumb goes in the nape of the neck. Nape of the neck. Now I start to encourage him to get his head up. I fight it, but I'm, I'm tricking him. And then when he pulls it up, I push it to the side, reach in, change angles, and I have that choke, okay? So once again, I'm pulling his head down, but I'm putting my thumb in the nape of his neck. Then I let him get his head up, push it to the side, hand in the gi. If you can't get the hand in the gi, that's okay to come over here, there like that. Look, my feet unlocked, but I try not to put them on the ground if you can. Change angles there. Now, do you notice I've gone from parallel to perpendicular? So now what I'm doing is pulling my bottom hand, pushing my top hand, and the jaw pressure and choke go on. Okay? Another really good way to work on the ground is as I pull in, watch my knee. I'm going to pull knee up and see what that does to his elbow, flares his elbow. Now, of course, on the ground, there's arm bars. There's all kinds of arm bars. There's all lots, lots of things you can do. But today, we're simply looking at chokes. So I'm here on the ground. What I'm doing, I may have the gi. I push. See that? Then this hand slides in here, and I go deep on his collar. See that? So I'm under his arm, deep on the collar. So once again, I'm in this position, playing. And I'm just using my legs there. I bring the hand over, under, and I pass that collar to my hand. Okay? From there, I simply go to my side. One of the good reasons of that is punch me with that hand. He can't because his weight goes to that hand. If I'm here, punch me with that hand, he can punch me all day. Okay? So on the street, you never want to... And if you're a police officer... The last thing in the world you want is someone to have access to your gun. Even though the holsters are designed to make it hard, you don't want to give it. So as a police officer, probably the best thing you can do is lie on your gun. Lie on that. He tries to punch me. He tries to move that hand. It's really hard. What I have here is I have pressure on the elbow, like an arm bar. This knee, I can bring in front and really arm bar. Or... I can take this hand, grab, and once again, push, pull for the choke. So just so you know that um, a lot of these techniques are applicable without a V, I let him pull his head back. I sit up with it, and then watch what I do. I pull his head, 
into my arm, grab my hand, and go high elbow. There, like that. So turn around once again, show you at a different angle. So here, once again, this you don't have to be a grappler. You can find yourself in this situation for all kinds of reasons. He throws a punch at me. I push with my knee, okay? He throws a punch, push with the knee, then I go up. Then I pull his head down, loop, high elbow. I'll do it the other side so you can see. I'll pull this side. Pull down, around the knife hand. The thumb is up. I'm going to pull my knife hand up and loop the shoulder high and then just squeeze. And that's a really good... Really um, tight. Yeah, super tight, very effective. Doesn't take... Maybe takes a 1,000 reps and you have a virtually unbeatable uh, guillotine choke. Okay, but you've got to do the reps. You can't, you're not going to be able to pull off this timing, this timing, and particularly this timing to get the elbow high if you don't practice it. Another thing, too, is you may see yourself in this situation with no gi. Look, put my thumb in the T-shirt, and I pull that T-shirt up. T-shirts are really good because they don't tear, so they're God's gifts for chokers. Come around here, and now I simply pull him right in, and I can. Now, here's the other beautiful thing of a choke. I'm in this situation. I work for the choke, but he's a tough son of a gun. So what I do now is I use this arm. I sweep him over here, and then I can start to rain punches upon him. Okay, so now let's look at Mitch is on the ground. Yes. Um, pay attention to this one. This is really good. This is actually something that I came up with myself. It's a variation of what is very common, which is called an Ezekiel choke. The reality of Ezekiel choke is that the arm that goes under the head, you hold the sleeve and choke. But this is a, a naked version or a no-gi version. Watch what we do. There's a series of, of, uh, series of points that are very, very key. The first thing is if I'm here and Mitch starts to shut my arm down and work on a sweep, so the next thing you know he's going to, and I'm going, and boom, I'm, he's going to sweep me over, okay? So the most important thing always in the mount, good solid four-point or three-point contact, okay? Now, if I put one arm under his head, that's his invitation to sweep me that way, boom, like that, okay? So... This is for you guys who are doing some grappling. If I put my arm under the head, I put my body on this side. So now when he tries to sweep, it's much harder. He doesn't have the same level of leverage. as Okay, so look what we do here. I come under, watch my fingers. We call this spider fingers, spider fingers. Notice Mitch's head. My objective is to get his ear on his shoulders. Spider fingers, spider fingers. And then I'm going to reach under and grab him in the armpit. Okay? Now I can push the head, this hand, chisel fist, goes on his neck, and this hand pushes it in. Now, it's very subtle, but spider fingers, spider fingers, I come on over here, watch Mitch's head. As I put this in and I start to trigger it, see his head moving. So we came up with an innovation. We're, we're here. What I do is pull the head and put my head that side of it. Okay? So we're here. I over, 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 tricep. Then what I'm going to do is lean, pull his head and put my head that side of it. Now, when I put my chisel fist on his neck, his head goes nowhere. His head, which would normally move like that, it can't move now. Put it here. He tries to move his head away. And you can just force it in like that. So that's a rear naked. I mean, a, a, a no gi or a, a no jacket Ezekiel. Very effective. The X choke from the mount is very common with a gi. 
but I also tried to work on an X choke from the mount without a gi. And the way that I work it is this hand comes over and I hook my arm very strongly under his shoulder to create an anchor. Then I put my elbow on his chest, you see, and then from the chest, as my weight goes over, I elevate my elbow. Now you can almost get, and I have gotten quite often, you can almost get a single arm choke just there like this. But Mitch is, Mitch is grappled a bit, so he's not going to bowl over so easy and be too compliant. So that's where the second arm comes in. Hook under the shoulder, elbow on the chest, slide it up. Now watch what I do. This hand is my third point tripod, so I need it for balance. So I'm over here. The hand moves around, moves around. Now my tricep, see how he's turning away. Naturally, he'll turn away from the choke. It won't work if he does that. So I need to come here and I push his head back, even if he keeps turning into it. I push his head back with my elbow, tricep, and then you get the choke simply by. Let me do it the other side so you see. Hook under the shoulder. Elbow to chest. Slide up to get maximum leverage. But he'll turn his head away naturally to avoid the pressure. Tripod. Take my arm in a circle, and then I come back with my tricep across his head, and I get the cross face uh, pressure choke like that. Is that all right? Of um, just throw the gi on for a sec. So on the ground with the gi as well. Uh, you don't have to be into BJJ to appreciate the amazing skill of a gentleman named uh, Roger Gracie. He's fighting, I think he's nine times world champion against the absolute best in the world. And he's got every one of his nine championships with one position, and that's the position. And variations on that, whether it's a choke or one way or a different choke or that and that. Okay, so um, on the ground now, once again, I'm here. Now, if you're interested in grappling, one of the things you want to think about in the mount is always make sure you've got four point contact or three point. So if I go to put my hand in his collar to choke, that traps that arm. So he'll trap the arm and bridge me in that direction, okay? So I'm gonna go over. So what I need to do is when I do that, I move my whole body over and I have this hand ready for a tripod, okay? Then look, I'll do it this side so you can see. Let's move back a bit. I'm in this position. I don't want to go into the intricacies of high mount, low mount. As far as possible, if you can get a high mount here, that's the best place in the world to be because you can just rain fury or even take arm bars, wrist locks, everything here, and you, he's at your mercy. But we won't worry about that. It's a different story. Today we're just looking at chokes. Okay, so I want to come down here. First thing I'm going to do is put my thumb in, punch the ground like that. Then what I'm going to do is use my elbow to elevate his jaw. And I slip my fingers in underneath that. Okay, then I pull this hand, push that one. Now remember, your hands are tied up. So when he taps, you have to be able to release the pressure. And the best way to do that is let the pressure go to your head. So you'll, I don't mean egotistically, I mean physiologically. So I'm here. As I start to put it on, I take my head towards it and he taps. And all I do is I put my head on the ground that allows me to release my hands. Okay. Come in here. Thumb in. Fist to ground. Good Kyokushin fist. I elbow to chest, slide up under his jaw, and this hand comes underneath, fingers in. So one side is thumb in, one side is, they call this the baseball. It's like a baseball bat, like that. Thumb in, elevate, fingers in. I go to the side of the high elbow. And when he taps, I just release and let 
the pressure go to my head. Okay. Once again, from this position, you do have the Ezekiel. If I had a gi on, you grab your sleeve. That's another story. Won't worry about that for now. Um, I think that's a lot of chokes. <laughs> that's a whole hour of chokes. Um, if you can't find something out of that, uh, you love this. I, well, Mitch and I go back a long way, and he's much fitter, faster, stronger, and better looking at me than me, so I've got to take it out on him in some way, Mac. Fair call. Us. So uh, these are very simple chokes. The key to learning chokes is don't try and finish the choke. If you're grappling, if you're training, you don't try and finish the choke. You try and get the angle. So if I'm, I'm so anxious to get the choke, I squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. All I do is I just change the angle and the choke goes on. Okay? So once again, it's like karate. If you're in the dead zone, there's very little you can do, but you change angles. You have optimized your ability to attack. Well, it's the same with chokes. I have to change angles. The more you change the angle, the more you optimize the strength of the choke. What's that on TV? Oh, my thing's finished and someone else. Look, there we go. See what it's talking about? The seatbelt. Look, got control of the arm under the seatbelt. That's a real, we didn't do back control. Yeah, we might do it quickly just to finish off. We're getting, you know, got a few minutes left. Okay, Brad's also Arvid, member of the Budo Blueprint um, Foundation Group. Brad Hansen, member. Mitch is a member. So, and Rochelle's a member. So, if you're uh, not a member, Mac Robinson's a member of the uh, of the uh, Budo Blueprint app, nine week system. All of you, Michelle also, and Rochelle as well. They're all members. I think it's going to be an exciting time. So, let's quickly look at what did I say we're going to look at? Back control, okay, and chokes off the back. It's over here. I'll straighten this mat up a little bit. Okay, so back control has a lot to do with controlling his hips, okay? If I have seat belt and I go to choke and I don't have my hooks in, he simply turned the other way. We're going to get out of it simply like that, okay? If I have this arm under and I start to choke, I can prevent the turn this way. Let's go down a little bit here so they can see. So sometimes you can't get your hooks in. I recognize that. If I, he, he connects his elbow and knee, I'm having trouble getting the hook in. So one thing you can do is this. Look, I take the choke arm. Nice, deep, strong strong Turkishin fist. I extend this arm up and I put it behind his head. Now I do this motion. Get on butai. Get on butai. One deep. Up, down, get on butai. And the choke goes on straight away. And you don't need the hooks in as much. So he turns out of that, turn out of it. He can't because of the arm control. Okay, so at times where you can't get your hooks in, that's what you want to do. Okay, uh, we also haven't done the hadaka, the, the kata hajime, which is a really big one. Look, we're out of time. I mean, I'm just starting to think of four or five more chokes. But in the back now, what you want to do is you get your feet in here, and I stay up. I don't want to let him lie back and put his weight on me, especially if he's 10, 20 kgs heavier. So in that situation, what you can do is. Put your feet under his legs, pick them up, and sit back up again. Then I get my thumb in deep. I want to control that hand. If I start to put the choke on, he has two hands against my two hands. Okay? So a good principle is I want to control this hand. I'm going to sit up a little bit so you can see. And I'm putting it down, and I'm going to hook my leg over his arm now. So now he has one hand against my two, and the odds are infinitely different. So that's a really good, uh, that'll do, I think. That's a really good, all the others you can do on the back, we've already done, the rear naked, things like that. Mitch, makes it easy to grasp when demonstrated on someone. Good. Yes, I'm, I'm very sorry if I had a partner to do every session, I would. But as you can see, what a difference it makes. Uh, thanks, Mitch.
Thank Mitch you. and I train together regularly. We've been training together for so long now. How old were you and you and Uchi Deshi? Uh, 19. 19. And uh, you're in your 40s now, aren't you? Oof. Yeah, so we go back a long way. But anyway, I hope you got something out of that. Review it. Find one choke out of that that you can work on. Refine the detail. Refine the detail. Refine the detail. It's all in the transitions. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. It's like one, two. One, two. And then one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, you've got to drill that over and over and over and over. Okay? Thanks, guys. Look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers.